And hey, you know these Money in the Bank numbers? Mm. New records, viewership, sponsorship, merchandise, social media. Viewership 17% over last year's record. So, uh, the, the viewership of Money in the Bank surpassed Clash of the Castle by 30%. Sponsorship revenue 9% up. Uh, highest grossing event for venue merchandise in the history of WWE. You're bearing so, the lead, Brian. Well, hold on. Bearing the I'm lead. just going through all of these. Uh, on location, I don't even know what that means. Social media doesn't matter. But the fact is, like, tons and tons of people watch this show on Saturday. And by the way, it does not say live. They just did. And uh, it did huge ticket sales. It did huge business. in like, every every single... Everything was up over year over year. So, I mean, that's going to affect a show like Collision on Saturday night. Well, I mean, the the key thing coming out of WWE in that press release is the fact that it's the biggest non-WrestleMania in arena event to ever take place. You know, when they include stadiums, then no. But when you include just arenas, it was the highest grossing one of all time. Yes. And the highest, and the highest grossing SmackDown of all time. So, you know, kudos to them. Now, back to Collision for a well, moment. Well, before we get to that. Yes. That was the record. That was the the non-stadium record for WWE. It took place this past uh, Saturday. Yes. For a show, by the way, built around the bloodline, but that's another matter entirely. <laughs> and uh, and SummerSlam is, uh, is going to be the highest grossing WWE event in history that was not a WrestleMania. Yeah. So, so like, you know, I mentioned this on Twitter yesterday because somebody was, I don't know what they were talking about, but it was like, you know, I, you know somebody said something and then another guy goes, I'm sorry you're angry that AEW was a success. And uh, it was like, you know, if people actually are angry that AEW is a success, why are you angry? Because its success has had zero bearing on the success of WWE. Like, if you're a WWE fan, then the, the, the amount of success that AEW has or has not generated means nothing. Because right now, WWE is the most successful it has ever been. It's more than the 80s, people more than the 90s, more than uh, the 2000s was much. But, like, this is the biggest right now. You all are living right now in you. the most successful period in the history of WWE ever. Ever. And it's not just because of television deals, but it's arena business. It's it's everything. It is. This is the most successful this company has ever, ever, ever been. So... Why you would get mad about any success that AEW has or New Japan or anything else, it doesn't matter. They could all be as successful as they could possibly be. It has had zero bearing on WWE. They are on fire right now. So anyway. I got off the collision for this. You were going to talk yeah, about okay. Collision. Look, Collision, everything's going to hurt Collision. That's just going to be the way it is. I talked about it last week on the show there's going to be wild variations for no reason whatsoever, let alone when they do actually face competition. And the bottom line is, I think you're wrong in a way when it comes to money in the bank being during the daytime, because really, I think anything, anything is going to be, if it's live, especially, especially if it's sports, but anything taking place in your life is going to push collision unless it's hyped up to be an incredible can't miss show. It is always going to be pushed to the DVR first. Hate to say it, but that's the way it's going to be. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Simper, VV, also WrestlingObserver.com. You know, I don't put a lot of stock in all this social media stuff that WWE likes to tout because... 99% of it is like, eh, whatever. And I'll give you a good example. Like, if you put up a, a WWE video on social media, like, it might do, I don't know, two, three million views or whatever. And then every now and then it'll be like, there was a segment with Lana that did 10 million. And then you find out it was, uh, you know, nine 9.5 million from India like or something. Just something India, bizarre, yeah. you know? And it's like, okay, well, what do these numbers mean? They don't mean anything. Okay? But, but. Make them make revenue. Let me make this clear. All right. If you don't like the Bloodline storyline subjectively, that is your opinion, and you are welcome to it. If you subjectively think that it sucks, that's fine. Do not sit here and tell me objectively that it sucks, okay? Because it is on its way right now, and I know this is going to make people mad, but this is a fact. It is on its way to being the most successful storyline ever in the history of wrestling. 
Well, hold and, on. And it might already be. Okay. Hold on. This bloodline match that they did on Sunday night. Okay. They put they put a clip of this up on social media of the uh, bloodline main event. And uh and this clip in 48 hours had 40 million views for this clip, okay? Which they even admit that the previous real big clip, which was when uh, when Jimmy super kicked Roman Reigns, that one had 10 million, okay? So they're not claiming that, they, like, this did four times as many views for that clip of the Bloodline uh, Civil War match. 40 million viewers in 48 hours for that thing. So this, like, all, everything we talk about as far as, like, records and everything like that, this is the Bloodline storyline. And, you know, if you want to argue that uh, Cody should have won or Sammy should have won or whatever, like you can. But it is inarguable that their fan base, to them, this is a gigantic, monumental storyline that is absolutely completely carrying the company. And if you want to try and go back and find something that's done better business than this long term, you can. This is not like just a one shot thing. You know, one WrestleMania did well. Like, this has completely turned the company around for going on six months now or whatever. Everything, everything is up year over year. Everything is shattering records. I mean, it's the bloodline storyline. That's it. Two things can be true here, um, which is a lot of what you said. But then when you take a look at it historically and say because citing social media numbers and citing what it's done for tv ratings which is a legitimate thing that this is bigger than anything else like you're talking about they they're you look the spike to what two million viewers or whatever it is on smack all of that important it, it really is raw getting near that again and being over it last week important very good you know but Stone Cold Steve Austin and Vince McMahon had a long-term effect that we still feel today. The NWO still sells merchandise today. I think for its time, yeah. I mean, this you could argue this is the biggest thing that has taken pace, place in professional wrestling, depending on how you want to view things, more than anything in the entire world. Include Japan, include Mexico. That can absolutely be true, and it is going to go down, I think, as an all-timer, especially in this age of social media, especially in this age where people, you know, they want to reminisce about things, but they have very short attention spans. So, yeah, this is going to take a lot of air for a long time. I mean, we're what? two and a half years into the thing, you know, with him and his title reign and all that stuff, and we don't have any ending in sight. We think it's going to be with Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania, but guess what? That doesn't mean that this Roman bloodline storyline has got to end if you suck other people in the universe into it and they continue to get over in the same way that Sami Zayn did or in the same way that Cody Rhodes continues to. So, again, two things can be true in this case, but I think you need to let a lot more history play out before you say this is an well, time well, we you know. can, but here's here's the issue, okay? The because well, it can go right or left very easily. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing, okay? You the the argument of the the best storyline they've ever done, initially should obviously go to Steve Austin and Vince McMahon, not just because of the business that it did, but the business success of that storyline led to them going public and making more money than they'd ever made ever. Okay, they are making multitudes more money now. And here's the key. Once again, it, hold on. Once again, once again, as we talked about the other day, they have the most incredible timing because it is a contract year. Fact. And this is the first year in forever that they are up year over year. And especially if you look at the rest of television, let's look at the rest of television. Okay. Outside of the NFL. Find me other shows that are that have grown year over year from the year prior. You're not going to find any, but you'll find WWE. So it is a contract year. They are up year over year in everything. And if anybody wants to argue there's something other than the bloodline, I don't know what to tell you because it's not. It's that storyline. 
So, you know, because of this bloodline storyline, not only are there all of the the immediate things, your your arena merchandise, your arena records, your revenue records, your merchandise records, all of that. Not only do you have all of that, but all of that is leading to them likely signing a $2 billion television deal because their previous television deal was $1.3 billion. And the uh, and, and you know even Nick Khan is like you know we'll probably get a fifty percent increase, and uh, Nick Khan's no idiot. I mean, he's not going to say fifty percent if he's expecting twenty five percent. So I think at minimum there is a very very good likelihood because of all of this that they are going to sign a two billion dollar television deal. And, like, there's no comparison to any other time in history. I mean, even scaling up, there's no comparison. It is it is an impossible, an impossible success right now. And it's all built on the back of that storyline. You are absolutely right. But it's not an impossible point to volley back on. Because even though that is, is indisputable with the way the market has changed, the way the economy has changed, but I think look at the merchandise sales scale that you know at the time and not just as part of austin but look at what he ended up again just his own stuff alone his own merchandising all of those things from coloring books to die cast you know cars and all of the random stuff he was all over the amount of money made off of that and i think that trickled down in a different way i think I don't know. I would love for somebody to do the hardcore economics on, I think, that, the NWO. And I guess the only other thing off the top of my head I could throw out there would be Bruno San Martino, which all the TV goes right out the window with that. But you just factor in house shows, the money made off of him main eventing those double MSG sellouts in Boston and Baltimore and all these big cities, you know, a couple of days a week. And and make that money, you know, to into today's. I mean, that's the only stuff I can think of. But yeah, I mean, this is this is an all timer. It absolutely is, and they've gotten hot at the right time. They've gone over to England where they're going to be renegotiating a deal, and it's a massive big celebration. They timed their tour going back to India at a time where they're looking to get Netflix involved there. Their the timing of that is, you know, it's not you know, they're not stupid and they know India is starved it's the same way England was. So of course you're gonna come out. Even if times were bad, even if this bloodline storyline was down, I still think they would have gotten that reaction because they starved them for so long but they did it very strategically again this is where nick khan and those brains are very effective hey if you love this clip have i got a deal for you wrestlingobserver.com you have a commute do you work out at the gym do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today well wrestlingobserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.